Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is grinding geek and it is a medium level problem. So the problem says that it is uh, a kind of a promotion of the current ongoing offer. They say that uh, there, is an offer, uh, there is an offer according to which if you buy a course and manage to complete 90% of the course within 90 days, you will receive a 90% refund. This is their original offer. Now, there is a special offer for this particular problem statement. It's a, the offer is the same, but uh, they say that Geek has decided that if he buys a course on some day, he will complete the course on the same day itself. Right. So, completing the course means he will get 90% of the value back. Right. Now, we have to find out the maximum number of courses that Geek can complete in those end days if he had total amount of money initially. Right. So, this is the whole question. Now, let me just uh, explain you. So, let us say we have an array. This array will define the courses, the uh, like the price of the courses. So, let us say this is of course value, let us say 5 and then 10, then let us say 6 and then let us say 20 and then let us say 9 and then 2, right. So, these are the course values and each course is valid for only one day. So, that means you can buy this particular course only on the first day. After then, you can buy this particular course and then this particular course and so on. You have total amount of money initially and when you buy a course, you are going to complete it on the same day. So, you are going to get 90% of your cap value back or 90% of your cost back and you will have to take the floor value of this particular thing. Right. So, how do we actually solve it? We are going to solve it with DP. And this is going to be a very simple DP. I am going to define a two-dimensional DP state, DP of ij, where i is going to denote my current index and j is going to denote the money left with me. Now, what I am going to do, DP of ij together is going to denote the answer if I start from the ith index and I have j money, right. So, dp of ij is uh, basically going to denote the answer of my problem if I start from the ith index and I have j total amount of money where I start from the ith index, right. These are the constraints. Now, where is my answer going to say? Uh, first of all, let us discuss the base cases, base case. So, when i is equals to n, if we consider zero based indexing, so when i is equals to n, we would have exhausted all the money, all the courses, possible courses. So, in this particular case, you can complete zero more courses, right. So, basically what I am saying is, when i is equal to n, that means we have exhausted all the courses. So, if you have a pointer, if you have a pointer traversing through this array, this is position 0, then position 1 and then so on. When you reach this particular position, which is position n, that means you, better, you have already covered all of these courses. So, if you cannot take any more courses, the answer will be straight away 0, right. So, this is why it is 0 here. Now, what you do, our answer will be stored in dp of 0 total, right. So, basically this says that I am starting from index 0, that is this one, and I have total amount of money initially, right. So, that is why our answer is going to be stored in dp of 0 total. Now that we have discussed this, let us discuss how we can form our memoization function or discuss our transitions, it is the same thing. So, let us say we have a helper function having two values int int i and int j right now first of all the very first thing that we need to do is if i is equals to equals to n then we have to return 0 right if dp of ij is not equals to minus 1 we have to return dp of ij that means if i have already calculated this particular state i do not need to calculate it again right now i will take or not take this particular course, right. I only have two options and let us say we initialize both of them to be 0. So, we have initialized both of them. Now, what I have to do is, if I do not take this particular course, then it is very simple. I will just move on to the next course and my total amount of money will remain the same. So, you see what I am doing is, if I decide not to take this particular course, my answer will be stored in dp of i plus 1. So, I am doing i plus 1 here and the total amount of money will not change. So, j is as it is, right. Now, if you can buy this particular course, that means cost of the current course should be less than equals to the current amount of money that I have, that is j, right. 
remember you are going to get 90% of your value back but in order to buy the course you will have to have the value upfront right so if you, if the course is of 100 rupees let's say once you complete it you will get 90 rupees back so let me just write it also so this part is important to understand because let's say the course is rupees 100 right when you complete it when you complete it you will get rupees 90 back right and effective price effective price is equals to rupees 10 right this is something we all understand but in order to in order to buy the course you need rupees 100 upfront right so if you don't have 100 rupees you only have 10 rupees you will not be able to buy the course right you need 100 rupees to buy the course though later you will get the other money back but you will need 100 rupees right so this is why i compare it with uh, cost of j, cost of i right so if cost of i is less than equal to j then my remaining amount of money will be j minus cost of i that is the cost of the product then i will receive 90 percent back so cost of i into 9 by 10 right so this is the amount of money that i'll have now my take will be equal to 1 plus that means 1 is the current course and I move on to the i plus 1 and remaining value. So you see I am adding 1 because of the current course because I am taking the current course. I am moving on to the index i plus 1 and I am passing the remaining amount of money that I have. What is the remaining amount of money? J was the initial money. I purchased the current course so I have subtracted cost of i. Then I receive 90 percent back that is why I add cost of i into 9 by 10. So 9 by 10 is basically 90 percent right. Now, at the end, when I do this, I just have to return dp of ij is equal to maximum of take comma no take, right. So, this is a simple take no take dp and this is how you can solve this. So, I believe this, uh, this will be the memoize function and you can do it this way. Now, let us try to convert this exact same code into the recursive form, into the iterative format and let us see how the code looks. So this is the uh, iterative code. What I've done is I've initialized a DP array of size n plus one cross total plus one, right? So that the indexes n and total are there in the array or the vector. Now uh, ignore these for loops for now. Let's focus on the main logic, which is I've initialized two values take and no take. This is the exact same thing that I have done here, right? Then I initialized no take, and then if cost of i is less than j, I do the rest of the things. So that is exactly the same thing. I have initialized no take with DP of i plus one j. I have replaced all the helper functions with just dp of i plus 1 and j and whatever i and j are and if cost of i is less than equal to j I calculate the remaining value and I set my take as 1 plus dp of i plus 1 remaining value. Now dp of ij should be equal to maximum of take and no take and as discussed our answer will be in dp of 0 total right. Now what we need to do is we need to understand how these for loops work. So you see that uh, this particular state i is depending upon take and no take. And both of them are depending on some other state i plus 1. So basically i is depending on i plus 1. That means i plus 1 has to be calculated before calculating state i. Right. So that is why this particular for loop is in reverse order. Now the order of j does not really matter. So you can calculate it either way. But the i loop should be in reverse order. Right. And this is how you can solve this particular problem. Let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works. And this code is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.